Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on anemia of chronic disease. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about chronic conditions that can lead to this type of anemia. We're also gonna talk about the pathophysiology behind this condition. We're also gonna talk about the signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So anemia of chronic disease is a hematological condition involving low levels of red blood cells. So this is essentially the definition of anemia. And more specifically, anemia is a low hemoglobin level. So anemia of chronic disease is when there is low levels of red blood cells or a low hemoglobin level in the context of a chronic inflammatory condition. We'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. For the definition of what constitutes a low hemoglobin level, it depends on the biological sex of the patient. If the patient is an adult male, if their hemoglobin is less than 130 grams per liter, that would be considered anemia. If their hematocrit, which is the proportion of blood that is red blood cells, if that is less than 0.41, that's also another definition of anemia in male patients. And in adult females, if their hemoglobin level is less than 120 grams per liter, that's anemia. And if their hematocrit is less than 0.38, that would also be considered anemia as well. So this is the definition of anemia. But anemia of chronic disease is, as we mentioned before, associated with chronic diseases, more commonly inflammatory conditions. So it's anemia that is in the context of chronic diseases, more specifically chronic inflammatory conditions. What might some of those chronic inflammatory conditions be? Some of them include infections. So these might include an abscess that a patient might have or some other chronic infection that they may be dealing with. So it leads to a chronic inflammatory state in their body that can cause anemia. Diabetes is also another common chronic condition that can lead to anemia of chronic disease. Malignancy, so having a cancer can also cause anemia of chronic disease. Autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, these can all lead to anemia of chronic disease. They are general systemic inflammatory conditions, so they can oftentimes lead to anemia of chronic disease as well. Liver disease is also another condition that might cause anemia of chronic disease. And then there's also kidney disease that can lead to an anemia, but if anemia is caused by or related to chronic kidney disease, we don't necessarily say this is anemia of chronic disease. We say this is anemia of chronic kidney disease because the pathophysiology behind why it happens is slightly different than these other conditions we just mentioned. So this is a slightly different entity than anemia of chronic disease, but we'll talk a bit more about this in more detail in the next slide. Now let's talk about the pathogenesis of anemia of chronic disease. It all has to do with chronic inflammation, reducing the ability to absorb and utilize iron for red blood cell production. So what happens is there's an increased production and release of hepcidin from the liver. Hepcidin is a hormone that's produced in the liver that is responsible for regulating iron absorption and utilization. And more specifically, hepcidin inhibits iron absorption in the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, and inhibits the release of iron from macrophages, which are white blood cells. So normally, if we look at this diagram here, these are enterocytes. These would be the cells in the duodenum that are responsible for absorption of nutrients like iron. Normally, iron is brought up and absorbed by those enterocytes and brought into the blood of a patient who is healthy and has no issue. The liver produces hepcidin normally. It utilizes hepcidin to regulate iron absorption and metabolism. But in patients who have chronic inflammatory conditions, inflammation will actually increase the production of hepcidin and increase the release of hepcidin from the liver. And this will lead to increased levels of hepcidin and hepcidin inhibits the absorption of iron from the duodenum, essentially blocking the absorption of iron. Hepcidin can also inhibit the release of iron from macrophages, these white blood cells. So there's a lot of iron that becomes trapped within macrophages. So because of these two mechanisms, there's not going to be enough iron available for production of red blood cells. So red blood cells need iron to be produced because iron makes up the structure of hemoglobin. So because of this reason, we're going to see less blood cells being produced than there should be. Now, I mentioned this in the previous slide, but there's a slightly different mechanism as to why anemia occurs in chronic kidney disease. The hormone erythropoietin, or EPO, is a hormone that's synthesized in the kidneys and acts on the bone marrow, which is the site of red blood cell production. It acts on the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. So in chronic kidney disease, there is decreased functional kidney tissue. As chronic kidney disease progresses, we start to slowly lose more and more functional kidney tissue. This will then lead to decreased 
ability of the kidneys to synthesize erythropoietin. So this will lead to lower levels of EPO, and that means that there's going to be less EPO to act on the bone marrow. This is why we're going to see decreased red blood cells in chronic kidney disease because of the decreased production of erythropoietin. Now let's talk about the clinical features of anemia of chronic disease. So anemia of chronic disease has signs and symptoms like any other type of anemia. There's going to be fatigue, so patients are going to feel tired and fatigued. This is due to decreased oxygen delivery to cells and tissues, so they're going to feel more tired and more fatigued. There's going to be weakness due to the same reason. There's also going to be presyncope or the feeling of dizziness or lightheadedness. Pallor can occur, so this is where the skin becomes more pale in tone. There can be decreased concentration that can occur. There can also be shortness of breath in some patients. And in, in some patients, if it's more severe, it can be chest pain or angina. So these last two might not necessarily occur with anemia of chronic disease. It's oftentimes going to be a more mild type of anemia. So we might not see this shortness of breath and chest pain, but it could occur in some patients. So again, these are going to be some classic signs and symptoms of anemia that can occur in anemia of chronic disease. Now let's talk about how anemia of chronic disease is diagnosed and treated. Clinicians diagnose anemia of chronic disease first by looking at the patient. The patient will have a chronic inflammatory condition, like one of those that we talked about before, and then blood work will be performed on that patient. So oftentimes, blood work will be performed, so a complete blood count or CBC will be performed, and the clinician will look at the MCV or the mean corpuscular volume, which is the average size of red blood cells when looking at a large number of them. So in some cases, the MCV is going to be less than 80, which would be defined as microcytic anemia, but more commonly, it's going to be normocytic anemia, MCV 80 to 100. So most of the time, anemia of chronic disease is going to be a normocytic anemia, MCV 80 to 100. And it's most commonly going to be normochromic, which means that the cells don't have increased central pallor. So central pallor is this whitened out area in the center of the cells, if it's around one third of the diameter of the cell, that's normal. If it's greater than that or greater than two thirds the diameter of the red blood cell, that would be hypochromic anemia, which is not going to be commonly found in anemia of chronic disease. That would be something we might see in iron deficiency anemia. Anemia of chronic disease is more likely going to be normocytic and normochromic. We're also going to find that there's going to be decreased serum iron. This makes sense. If hepcidin is increased, we're going to see decreased absorption of iron in the duodenum, and we're also going to see decreased release of iron from macrophages, so there's going to be iron trapping in macrophages. Now, although there's decreased available iron in the serum, there's decreased total iron binding capacity and decreased transferrin levels. So there is iron in the blood or in the body, but it's not being able to be accessed for utilization properly. So this is why we can see decreased transferrin levels and decreased total iron binding capacity. And then we can also see increased ferritin levels. Ferritin is increased not necessarily because of the issue with iron metabolism, but it's more going to be related to the inflammatory condition. Ferritin is an acute phase reactant. So depending on the inflammatory condition, we can see elevated ferritin levels, and this is the reason why. And then oftentimes we're going to see a normal red cell distribution width. So sometimes anemia of chronic disease can be difficult to differentiate from an iron deficiency anemia, but looking at some of these, we can distinguish between iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disease. Iron deficiency anemia is going to be microcytic and hypochromic, and it's going to have increased transferrin and increased total iron binding capacities and decreased ferritin levels. So, but the big one that's going to differentiate between anemia of chronic disease and iron deficiency anemia is going to be the ferritin levels. In iron deficiency anemia, we're going to see low ferritin levels. Now, how do clinicians treat this condition? It's all about treating the underlying cause. So if it's diabetes, improving glucose control is going to be important. If it's an autoimmune condition, controlling that autoimmune condition, controlling the inflammatory state that's occurring is going to be very important in controlling this type of anemia. Most cases of anemia of chronic disease are going to be mild, and oftentimes the anemia is tolerated. So treating the underlying cause is going to do more for the patient than anything else. But erythropoietin, or EPO, can be given in certain circumstances. And one of these cases is anemia of chronic kidney disease. So most of the time, it's going to be treating the underlying cause that's going to be the most effective in treating this type of anemia. And then EPO, again, in certain circumstances where the patient might not be producing enough EPO, as is the case in anemia of chronic kidney disease. 
So if you want to learn more about other hematological conditions, please check out my hematology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks much for watching and hope to see you next time.